We're live. What is up, my brothers from another mother? Welcome to episode number 65 of the Before the Trainwreck series. Series cooked up uh, just for guys like you so that you do not make a total train wreck out of your life. Uh, got Rolo Tomasi joining me on this one, uh, probably about halfway through to chime in. He's, he's, he's one of the uh, top shelf guys that have kind of written a lot on this subject. Uh, and you'll probably hear me reference m many of the main points that um, I've learned from him, of course, from the Rational Mail book series. But a lot of this will be topped up with my own experiences and some of the things that I've learned um, coaching the uh, hundreds, probably close to a thousand guys now. But uh, before we kick this off, do me a few huge favors. One, this is available on podcast. Some of you guys have asked me if I can upload it to podcast. It's already available to podcast form, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. All the platforms, as far as I know, um, my guy usually rips the audio and uploads it within about 24 to 36 hours after these are live. So you can listen to these as well. Also, if you're watching live right now, smash the like button and do me a huge favor. If you're on another platform, um, one of the other social ones out there, I've dropped the join link there just generally in the uh, general chat. So just click that and come over and watch on YouTube. It's the best place for me to broadcast this uh, for engagement purposes. It's how YouTube likes it. So let us begin. Why is it a bad idea to take the X back? I mean, I mean, the first question most guys ask is, should I take the X backs? Should I take the X back? And generally speaking, the answer is always no. Uh, there may be some rare exceptions, but I'm going to explain to you why it's a bad idea. And as a guy that's, you know, getting, getting on into the season years of his life, uh, I've made a lot of mistakes that I can help you guys avoid. So listen up. Tonight will be an amazing one. Um, let's deal with the first point. So the first thing is generally speaking, it's a bad idea because you likely have an unhealthy attachment to her, um, which is realistically the definition of one itis. Um, there's, there's been different ways that it's been explained or different, uh, things that it's been called, but it's essentially, it's the same thing. It's having a unhealthy attachment to one woman thinking that she is the only one for you possibly in this you know, world of, uh, well, there's 8 billion people in total, you know, assuming about 50, I think it's 51% of the population is female. So you're saying that this one is the only one that you can possibly have out of roughly 4 billion females out there. So let's start from that perspective. Now, the other thing is, if you have an unhealthy attachment to a woman, um, you never, ever, ever are gonna have a great experience as a guy. Uh, or even hoping to have her enter your frame, be a compliment to your life, not the focus of it. One of the first questions I'll ask guys, you know, during coaching sessions is, why did you guys break up, of course? Uh, and I always wanna know who the Levy and the Levor is. Um, so a lot of guys will rationalize in their head. I'm gonna say, I don't know, maybe close to about a quarter of the um, consults that I do, that, you know, that I get booked for are usually because of, some form of winitis or should I take her back or some version or you know combo of that. And the reason why the Levy and the Levor dynamic is an important one to consider is in any breakup, there's always going to be somebody that has decided to walk away. And usually the other person doesn't want to be walked away from. Generally speaking, when women leave a relationship, they're done. When a guy leaves a relationship and she doesn't want it to end, she's gonna keep bothering you uh, because she doesn't want it to be done. She she wants either final say, another kick at the can. Um, you know, one of the funny things that came up one time during conversation, I can't remember if it was on a rule zero or somewhere else, maybe it was offline when we were talking, but um, you know, when a guy breaks up, if if he wants to get clarity, or sorry, if if the guy is a levy and she's a levor, meaning she left him, and he wants to get some clarity, you know, this is often one of the mistakes that guys make. Why, you know, why did it end? Why did you leave? You know, this and that. Hoping to get some kind of honest answers out of her, which you're never going to get, by the way. Uh, she'll never directly tell you why. Um, you know, it's usually some version of, well, I needed to find myself or something like that. And we all know what finding, well, not we all, but the smart guys, the guys that are plugged in know what um, I'm just looking to find myself or, you know, I'm trying to get some answers, you know, within myself or I need to explore for myself. I just need some time, you know, for myself. That usually means that, you know, she's running through a train, um, you know, which is which is never a good thing. I mean, when chicks leave guys, they're 99% of the time done. It's not like they're looking to leave um, and come back. It's because they're done. So 
that's the first question I ask is what's the reason why? Like what is the dynamic between the Levy and the Leave War? Anytime um, she's left, you essentially need to move on. I'm going to reference a uh, essay here that Rolo just linked uh, about half hour ago on Twitter. Uh, it's a very short one, which I'm going to open up and show you in just a moment, which will which will kind of explain and and break it down in a little more detail. Um, I'll get your super chat in a second. I just saw that pop up there. Um, so we've dealt with uh, the reasoning now. More often than not, whenever you're pining for this chick to come back, you're not you're not giving much heed or much attention anyway um, to many of the uh, problems that you had. You kind of overlook them. A lot of guys, I find anyway, tend tend to focus on, oh well, you know, she she was really great, and I remember this one time when we were in Lake Tahoe or when we took that vacation out of the Caribbean. It was like the most sweetest thing ever. Blah blah blah. Insert in all the reasons why or or. or you know how I like to say that guys like to complicate their lives and then justify why they do it. They do this in many areas of their life, not just with finances, with business, with career choices. It happens a lot with women. In fact, I mostly reference it when it comes to women. One of the one of the things I'll say is like, well, you know, why are you trying to complicate your life with this decision to take this problem or invite this problem back into your life? So you're often focused on the wrong things, which is the best parts, you know, the best quality of it. But you, when you're apart and you're pining for her because you're worried about what she's doing or who she might be with or how many other guys she might be with, you feel like you're missing out. Never a good thing. So the next thing that I'd be asking myself is what exactly is going to change? Like, what are you hoping is going to be better on round two, three, for some guys, four, five, six, and seven. Um, I've talked to many guys that have gone through like multiple cycles of breakups where they take her back and then it's always the same thing over and over again. Nothing really changes. And the reality of it is women by their own nature, um, they have a difficult time taking accountability and ownership for their lives, for choices that they've made. Um, when they say they're sorry, they're not often sorry in the sincerest sense. Um, their behavior will more often than not conflict with, uh, words that they say, Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be different this time. You know, I'm going to make sure this, that, and the other thing doesn't happen, or I'm going to make you feel this, that, and the other thing. And a lot of the times they'll try to lure you back in with sex because typically, you know, women's sexual agency is the strongest bargaining position that they have. Um, and that's when you'll have the best sex, obviously, but, um, you know, then it's going to go back to what you guys had before, but again, so what specifically is going to change, you know, which brings me back to the other question, like what exactly was the reason why you guys broke up? Um, now there's scenarios and I put some show notes there, just some talking points to make sure that I didn't miss these, like when it might be appropriate to give her a second chance. And generally speaking, it's often no flat out, you know, it's a full on pass, but um, if it's not particularly significant or it's a, or if it's a behavior modification that she's identified herself, meaning you said, you know, I'm done, I'm out and you walk and she realizes, okay, I was being on unreasonable. Um, maybe I should take a close look within myself, some inner reflection. Um, and inner reflection does not mean, you know, uh, hanging out with Chad Tyrone and, and Kevin from sales. Inner reflection means inner reflection. It means seeking therapy. Uh, you're not her therapist. You're not going to coach her through whatever it was that perhaps created the breakup or contributed to it. Is she taking ownership for it? You know, is she working on it? Is she trying to become a better version of herself? More often than not, women don't do that. There are some women which will, but on a balance of probabilities, you're going to find it's unlikely to happen. So the only time that it may be appropriate is if it was not particularly significant, one, and two, if she's if she's acknowledged that she's got a problem with something and she's uh, seeking help to correct that behavior, and of course there's forward progress that's being made along the way, demonstrated by behaviors, not words. Um, you know, which you can competency test if you're you know if you're so inclined to go back for round two. If you've done this four times, <laughs> you got nobody to blame but yourself when it goes bad. You know, the fifth time and the sixth time and the seventh time. Um, you know, if you're, if you're going to give her the second chance, it's called a second chance. It's, it's one chance and that's it. And you want to see clear, uh, strong indicators by way of behavior. Again, not by words, uh, make sure there's no conflict there, that there's improvement in the direction that you're expecting. So you, you do not run into the same problems again with that relationship. Um, 
So I've covered those and let's talk about getting her out of your house as well. Um, yeah, actually, somebody just made a point about being an alcoholic or if she's got a drinking problem. Um, I'll talk about the red flags in a moment, but here's the thing. Um, how does a alcoholic deal with their drinking problem? Most of them don't, but the ones that successfully do first acknowledge that they have a drinking problem and then they start to work on it to get themselves help to deal with that drinking problem and realize, you know, I've got an addictive personality or I've got an addiction and I've got to fix this. And they make some successful um, or some or some progress towards remedying that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and you guys can post some questions there if you need to. Um, let me just grab these super chats real quick. Jason said, uh, "Thanks for making these videos, Rich. Anytime, bro. This is you know this is what I'm doing. I'm here to help you guys out." Uh, another one here from Joe. Unblock me on Twitter. Not a bot. Uh, I'll take a look, but generally speaking, if you get blocked on Twitter, it's because you're a prick. So uh, I'll take a look at that after the show, Joe. If, if that was an error, um, let me just see here. So let's pull this back down off here. Um, so right away, somebody in the uh, chat over here on the Twitter scope of things said, what about dating a girl that's an alcoholic? Um, so I have 12 red flags, uh, or sorry, not 12, but I've got 20 red flags that uh, I've popped up and I'm going to grab you the um, link here uh, because if you're not on that list, you need to get on it. In fact, one of the things that I'm planning on doing, guys, um, with this email list, and I, I really don't like... Um, bothering people with email because me personally when my inbox fills up with this crap it's kind of annoying so I tend to infrequently email it um, the plan was really to get you on it to notify you uh, when the book is ready and I've published now you should see it in the chat uh, the link to the 20 red flags so get on that and you can download the free chapter on red flags that you need to avoid so the question this guy asked here in the chat real quick which I want to hit on is what about dating a girl that's an alcoholic so if she's got a drinking problem or if she's got an addiction to anything, could be shopping, it could be uh, attention and validation on, on social media apps, um, could be drinking, could be drugs, uh, could be reality TV, any of those things that are unhealthy. But if she's got an addictive personality or she's got an addictive trait to something that's not serving the relationships, but, you know, specifically her or, or her ability to, um, uh, you know, complement your life if you will, you know, because we always say, you know, if you're going to let a woman into your inner life, if you're going to invite a woman into your life on an intimate basis, she needs to be a compliment to it. Otherwise, really, you keep her at arm's length and she's just a plate, you know, if you're going to engage that. But when it comes to addictions and problems or specifically the red flags that I outlined there, pretty much all of those red flags are deal breakers. Um, there's only a handful of them that um, I should probably code more as a yellow sort of tag, which I may modify before the book actually gets published out. Um, but generally speaking, most of those are deal breakers. She's got a drinking problem. She's an alcoholic. She's getting smashed every weekend. She's, you know, she's going out with her girlfriends, partying, dancing on, on, on bar tables, you know, till like four o'clock in the morning. And then you see her the next day and she passes out at seven o'clock because she didn't sleep the night before. God knows what the hell she was doing. Um, and she doesn't change that behavior. Then you know what she's all about, dude. It's, you know, it's as simple as that. She's already told you what she's about. She has that problem. And if you're, if you're going in a different direction and she's not going along for the ride, then just, you know, it's just a detour off the highway ramp and she gets off it and see you later, sign R and you carry on doing your thing. There's lots of women out there. Um, what you'll find from my own personal experience anyway is as you go through life, um, what I believed in my twenties was different from what I believe in my thirties versus what I believe today. And I'm sure that's going to continue to evolve over time as I get older. Um, but there was a time in my twenties that, you know, of course I would, you know, get involved in a relationship and break up and I'd have one itis for, and I couldn't get over it. And all I could think about all the time, you can't sleep, you can't eat and all that kind of bullshit. And, you know, that's kind of like par for the course for a lot of guys, especially when they're younger. But as you get older, you start to realize as you leave these, um, uh, terrible style uh, or terrible type of relationships that are that are also toxic. Um, you run into these problems less and less because you tolerate less. You know, you've learned your lesson not to get involved with that. I mean, you know, for me, I can use an example in my twenties. Um, you know, not to get involved with that trick, that chick that guzzles back a bottle of wine, smokes a pack of cigarettes, and hang and has a whole bunch of male friends orbiting around her. Um, you know, when, when things get rough or go sideways, she ends up porking them, right? So, um, you're going to learn 
hopefully you're going to learn at an early age the hard way. That's how most guys learn. Unfortunately, you know, you don't learn by, I can preach the stuff all day long, but for the most part, many of you guys are going to create a, a train wreck or a slight version of a train wreck out of your life before you decide not to let that sort of thing happen again. Um, it's, it's a very, very common thing. It's not that uncommon. So don't beat yourself up too badly over it. If you find yourself in that scenario, uh, it does happen. Um, Judd Grover, what'd you say over here? They're an X for a reason done and done in my book. Pretty much. That's, that's, that's the way that I approach life right now. It's, it's like done. Okay. Um, the only time that you're going to be hung up on it is if you don't have any options, if you feel a unhealthy attachment to that chick and you have one itis for, and you're sitting at home curled up in a ball, moaning and crying about it, not eating, not sleeping, you know, pining for her back while she's out banging a bunch of other dudes. Um, that's, that's, that's just the reality of the sexual marketplace. Men typically have a much harder time, uh, dealing with breakups. I did a video at one point about, um, why women find it a lot easier to get over guys than guys, uh, find it getting over girls. Um, and I believe it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a function of evolution. You know, there's like for millions, like we've been on this planet for a long time. This is, this is not something new. It's not like we've only been here for 10,000 years. We've been here for a long ass time and it's only in recent history, um, as a function through agriculture, which happened about 10,000 years ago, um, that we've, that we've dramatically changed our, um, living style. So, I mean, I don't have hair on my head, but let's pluck out a beard hair and I'll stretch my arms out. You know, you stretch, you know, you do the full condor stretch and you hold that beard hair, you know, kind of at the end, that little strand of hair. That's, that's how long we've been operating. You know, the thickness of that strand of hair is how long we've been operating. Uh, today, you know, for the last 10,000 years in this fashion, you know, with agriculture, with, you know, this uh, high level of uh, safety in a monogamous fashion, you know, sort of thing. It's not been like that for a long, long time. It's only been a recent history. So for the, for the most part, when um, there, there would be a, a split up 100,000, 200,000, a million years ago, you know, for example, between two people, um, two people, you know, when I say two people, I mean, a man and a woman, um, he would, he would often either be uh, killed by a warring tribe, um, you know, killed in action, sort of like hunting, gathering, you know, for example, maybe as an accident through disease, um, you know, whenever there, you guys have probably heard me talk about war brides before. I know we've, we've jammed about it before in other sessions and other platforms, but, um, women would, w were basically a commodity and they would be preserved and protected. If one warring tribe would go and conquer another, all the men of uh, fighting age would either be put in slavery or killed off. Women would be used for reproductive rights, men not so much. So you got to remember this has been happening for a long, long time, for millions and millions of years. And men didn't have to deal with, um, oh, you know, she's gone because they would either be dead or they would be enslaved, whereas women would uh, embrace the next guy that would come along, you know, the warring tribe, you know, for example, uh, and take him in because if they didn't, they wouldn't survive. So they, so they had, you know, it's a function of evolution. You know, they, they had to adapt and women are very eager, not eager, but they're, but they're very comfortable moving from one guy to the next and not thinking twice about it. Whereas men have a much, much harder time of it. Uh, I've, I've probably done, I don't know, 5% of my one-on-one -on -one calls, uh, with women, maybe even less. I've never had a woman say, I've got one itis. I've got an unhealthy attachment to this guy and I don't know how to get him out of my head. It just doesn't happen. It just does not happen. It's not a common thing. It's very uncommon. Whereas for men, it's the opposite side. They have a very, very hard time with it. You know, they have a very difficult time with breakup, which is why they rationalize in their head and, and start making up reasons why they believe they need to go back to her or to take her bad behaviors back. Um, you know, just remember, not much changes. It, it's it's just like round two, um, but it's the same same thing. Let me um, throw this blog post up here in the stream so I can read it to you guys. Um, so Rolo linked this in the tweet. Um, he should be on soon in a few minutes, but Rooting Through the Garbage is the title of it. I'm going to read it through because it's not a long one. It's, it's one of his shorter posts, uh, but he specifically uh, cites Iron Rule number seven. So easily one of the most common questions that he's dealt with over the last seven years, and this was published in 2011. So this is going back to the early 2000s. He's, he's super familiar with this, which is why he added it to the Iron Rules. Um, 
is how do I get her back? And iron rule number seven says it's always time and effort. I'm just going to highlight it so you can see it on the screen a little bit better. It's always time and effort better spent developing new, fresh, prospective women than it will ever be in attempting to reconstruct a failed relationship. Never root through the trash once the garbage has been dragged to the curb. You get messy, your neighbors see you do it, and what you thought was worth digging for is never, ever as valuable as you thought it was. I'm going to link this so I don't have to read this out, but I'll just drop this in the chat for you guys. You can pop it open in a new window. I'll drop that there. Um, if you guys are listening to the podcast version, uh, just search for rooting through the garbage and rational mail and it'll pop up on Google and uh, you'll have that there. Let me just remove that from the stream and go back to full screen. Um, let's see here. We've covered the unhealthy attachment items. Um, there's, I'm trying to think if I've, see, I've had, I've had a bunch of guys actually get back with the exes. And I've had a bunch of guys through a sequence of events go back through different conversations and follow up a couple months later, three months later, six months later. Um, and every single time, once I get them uneffed, or unattached from that loop because it's really a loop you know what you do is you put your you know you put your life on a looping cycle and <laughs> this person keeps showing up it's like a bad stench it never goes away it's like it's like luggage you never get rid of that shit and it's always the same problem over and over and over again the guy's more than willing to do the work the guys like what i'll find generally speaking is guys will jump through hoops they will they will um they will go to heroic efforts from what i've seen to try to reconstruct a failed relationship which is so bizarre to me now considering that i've lived through it a couple times in my life and i watch these guys they're always younger guys they're generally speaking under 30 35. uh it doesn't happen too often with some of the older guys they might go back once or twice it's like somebody once said to me it's like um you know, we used to have this uh, vending machine at a uh, nursery that I used to work at. It was a garden center nursery. I think I've told you guys, um, you know, the story before. I used to work at, um, you know, this nursery in this uh, greenhouse. And in the back where we had, like, the lunch area, somebody once said, you know, it's, relationships are kind of like tilting the um, vending machine back and forth to try to get your pop when it gets stuck. <laughs> it takes a few efforts. It takes a few shakes for it to actually come out. Um and it's kind of true, like they'll put a lot of effort into rocking that thing back and forth to try to make it work out for them just to get that, you know, can of pop to drop. And there's there's tons of them, like there's an endless supply of them in that machine. Um, you know, they never stop coming out. They're always there. You put another loony in and another one comes out. Loony, for those of you that don't know that are in different parts of the world, it's a dollar coin here in Canada. But a lot of guys will find that they'll that they'll keep going back and They'll expect something different. You know, what do they say about that old definition of insanity? You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's like I turn on the light switch up and down and I expect the, you know, the stove to turn on, you know, for example. That's an insane behavior. It just is not going to happen. It's not going to change. It's not going to improve. It's just never going to go in that direction. And that and that really truly is the definition of insanity is, is going back and forth to the same X, wasting your time. You, you only have a limited amount of time on this planet guys it's like you know i've said this again i'll say it again you know over and over again it's like sands in an hourglass i don't know how many grains of sand i got in my hourglass but at some point it's going to run out we know death and taxes are certain yeah we got rollo here in the back let me uh pull him in i'm gonna throw my headphones in so i can hear him but um you know when it runs out it runs out and that's all you get fellas what's up brother hey can you hear me okay yeah you're coming in loud and clear good, good, good. Uh, yeah, glad you joined me because I mean you kind of you kind of spent a lot of time on this, and I know this is something that we keep coming back to. Cool, cool. yeah. A lot of guys, you know, uh, invite back into their lives over and over again, expecting something to change. Mm -hmm. um, you've probably done way more consults than I have on this. Have you ever seen anybody successfully, you know, come back and go, you know, Rolo, I'm really glad that I took her back. You know, it you know it worked out. It really worked out well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, it worked out swell. <laughs> Well, you know, I tell you what, the, the thing that's funny is that I think it's probably the, the most common 
uh, occurrence, like the, for, for guys. And this is going back like way back to the so suave days from like, you know, 2002, 2003, where I have guys who say, how do I get her back? That's like the number one question. How do I get my girlfriend back? And if you go on, uh, if you go on YouTube right now and you put on, you just type in, you know, to search for like, how do I get my girlfriend back? There are like a billion videos like, God, here's five ways to get your girlfriend back. Yeah, they're and always that, it's really bad advice. And often never too. and and so it's always this technique or it's always this um, this Doctor Phil kind of pop psychology uh, you know thing that that is the you know the, those are the techniques or the methods. But what I always thought was like when I was listening to these guys talking about how they really want to get their girlfriend back, I'm like, why? Why would you want to do that? You you obviously broke up for a reason. That's why I, like you were saying about the Iron Real Tomasi number seven. You know, never root through garbage once you've taken the can out to the curb, right? Yeah. Because, and I, I usually when I had uh, counseling, even back in the day, um, I would ask guys. I said, "What do you think is possible? Like, what if if you got her back? Like, t- like give me the fantasy. Like, tell me what you would like to see happen." They usually focused on the good times, don't they? Yeah. Well, they always do that, yeah. and that, that's the first place they start. But then I go, then I tell them, I say, okay, but what do you think like you could do? And they're like, if you had your way, if she just suddenly, if you could change her behavior or you could get into her head and you could have the ideal, like make up and get back with her and get back to where things were before, what would that look like? And so they go through this, you know, the whole thing about, oh, we would do this and we go back. It was so good in the beginning and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, well, the problem with that is, first of all, do you think that that's possible? And almost unanimously, they're always saying no. And then I say, well, even if it were possible, even if the best case scenario was something that you could actually achieve, you would still have that one time where you guys split up, Mm -hmm. where she, where she decided that she wanted a break, right? (laughs) Well, she wanted a, uh, she wanted to split up with you. And then you got back together again. When you get back together with, uh, with an ex, it represents sort of this concession, I think either on your, well, actually on both parts, but usually one person, and usually that's the girl, uh, ends, ends up dumping the guy. And like women will listen to this and they'll go, no, I've been dumped by guys before. And like, yeah, sure. the, the ones, yeah, the ones you pine for, those alphas that made you the alpha widow, those are the ones you're talking about. Yeah. Women never talk about the, the guys that they dumped because women don't dump guys if they're like happy with those guys. If they think that they can do better, that's when they will. That's when they will decide what what's best for them. Mm. And so it's never like for guys, like women will always hold guys, or they'll say like guys are, are commitment phobic. Like, oh, they don't want to commit. They don't want to. You know, they can't lock down the alpha guy. And so they always sort of pawn off this idea that men are like they they're immature about when, when it comes to commitment. And for women, the idea of commitment is only commitment to them. It's not like commitment to military. It's not commitment to a business. It's not commitment to family. It's not commitment to anything. Commitment means nothing to women unless it means commitment to them and, and the relationship, right? Did so, you ever see that video clip with Tony Robbins? Um, it's got millions of views, and, and the title of it's something like Tony Robbins Saves a Marriage in, in Eight Minutes. And mm-hmm. the guy's a musician. Um, you should actually watch. I think I, I did, think- actually. Somebody sent me that one. I And yeah. I, I forgot how it goes, but I think I've seen that before. Yeah, like it basically goes like, you know, you need to fill her cup and forget about the music and serve mm-hmm. her, um, you know, whatever it is, the six yeah. biological needs of females and all this yeah. sort of thing. And it's like, and you know, then they have like a, a video mm-hmm. clip that they cut to afterwards where she's like, my marriage has never been better and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, you know, you can tell by her body language and the way she's talking that she's really not that happy. But that's the standard narrative, you know, like, like you were just saying, like I was speaking about earlier is generally speaking, it's, you know, well, you're a commitment phobe, you need to fill her cup, it, you know, it didn't work out because of you, Rolo, you need to do these things to make it work out, right? It's never, yeah, Yeah, it's always qualifying you. Uh, I, I have a, I'm going through, I'm, I'm kind of backing my way through uh, book four right now. And I'm at the marriage uh, part of it. <laughs> and part of that, I, t- I talked a little bit about this yesterday on my show is um, part of that is um, like what you do as a guy is all like in your marriage, your marriage like fails or succeeds based on what you do. 
like who you are, your duty, your commitment, your whatever your qualifications are. So usually what happens is like for, for the most part, most men are betas. Okay. Like we're talking about the 80 percenters right now, the guys who yeah. are the low SMV unattractive guys who are just good enough to for women to settle on when they get to their epiphany phase or maybe just a little bit before that maybe they're hedging their bets who knows um but so you get those guys and they've been fed a steady diet of qualify 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 be the best you can be you make sure that you got a good job and you you you're not going to be like your, your abusive alcoholic old man your 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 father um, make sure that you do what women tell you to qualify to them constantly. So when you're single as a guy, that's where it is. Like I got to qualify. I did something. If, if she's unhappy with me, if she broke up with me, it's my fault. It's not mm -hmm. her fault. It's my fault. And so it's this constant, like assuming of blame just as a reflexive response to anything. So if she's unhappy then it means that I did something bad. I have to, like, I got to get her flowers, right? Why do guys buy flowers for their girlfriends right now? Because mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, you must really screwed up. Or, you know, or, or if a girl, like if you're in an office situation and a flower show up, mm -hmm. it's either her birthday, Valentine's Day, or that guy screwed up. And it's always about qualification. It's always about competency. It's always about qualifying to the woman because in a gynocentric social order, women are presumed to be not that this is true, but these are presumed to be the primary sexual selectors. So when a woman is displeased with you, when a woman breaks up with you, most guys take that as a uh, as a failure on their part. So when a uh, a, a marriage fails, it's usually the guy who who assumes the blame himself. Or else it's his social network, his church or his friends or whatever, or her friends presume that he's the asshole, that he's mm -hmm. the guy that is, is um, to blame for the failure of that relationship. When in fact, it might be true that he is, but not for the reasons that he believes he is. So I'd like yeah, to, um, he backslid, maybe he went, he yeah. went from being very alpha, like she was really into it. And then he decided to get comfortable. Then he went beta, whatever. And that, so it might be. But it's not because of his sense of duty. It's because he didn't realize what he was falling into. I wish I um, redacted the screenshot that I took because, like the uh, like, to actually like solidify the point that you've made there would require me to show it to you. But I'm going to explain it to you. You know what it looks like. So I'm a fly on the wall in some of these men's groups on Facebook. I never comment, but I'm in the group. And typically speaking, the way the algorithms work is they'll show me posts when there's high engagement. And it's always something like, Hey guys, I screwed up. You know, my wife's not banging me anymore or my girlfriend's left me. You know, how do I get her back? You know, we've been living together. We have a kid together or whatever the narrative is. And then 90 guys will pile in the comments and 89 of them will say something like, well, you know, what's her love language? Um, you know, you need to give her 110% um, or links to some Tony Robbins crap. Or what's about, her MBTI letters? Yeah, yeah, what's her MBTI? And it's like, you know, basically bend over backwards to serve her to get her to come back and fill her cup or acknowledge a certain love language or something like that. And then there's the one guy that says, you should read the rational mail. <laughs> um, but like, oh, you'll go to hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like 80, like 80 out of the 90 are not red pilled. They're just mm -hmm. spewing what the standard social narrative is, which is it it's probably good. your fault. Kiss her ass, do everything that you possibly can to get her back and prove to her that you're the man that she needs to be with. And it's like oh. that never works out. I mean, they might go for it. They might be like, okay, I got this guy wrapped around my finger. He's now fully under my control. Fine. I'll go back and maybe they're banging chat on the side or not, but mm -hmm. it, it never works out in the guy's favor. Well, yeah. And then there's always, even if it does, even if I, cause I know guys who have used either my material or game or whatever, somebody else's material to get the girl back. Like, I think that that's one of the things that really kind of throws guys off is they'll break up with a girl or a girl will break up with them back in their high school days or their college days, maybe when they're younger. And then they then they come into game and then they learn the red pill and become a little bit more red pill aware. <clears throat> and what they do is they take that and they use that to go back in time <laughs> and get the girl, right? The mm -hmm. girl who they haven't talked to in four years. Suddenly she uh, reestablishes interest on Facebook or social media of some sort. And then she's like, 
they're, they're like, aha, now I can finally get her because I'm red pill wear. And it's, uh, I, I wrote an essay called, uh, this was actually for, more for women, but it was actually uh, refer, refers to men as well. It's called um, Old Game, or excuse me, uh, Old Flame, New Game. And as guys who would uh, be away from a girl for like four or five years, and then they would come into the come into they learn PUA, they whatever, mm. and then the girl would reestablish contact, or he would reestablish contact through Facebook or through social media, which we never were able to do. Mm. It used to be like you had to go back to your hometown, and then Sally, who's finally single, you get back. Oh, I never knew you were like this. Oh, you really turned into a, a real swell guy, and now yeah. she has. But the, really, the the truth of it is, is that her necessity has reprioritized the things in him and now suddenly he's attractive or you get these guys she's also are, got three kids in tow and another 40 pounds so her smvs drop like three points as well exactly and so you get these guys who will come into this or or they will be like kind of the the fat kid in high school and then they'll get into college they'll start their start bodybuilding they'll do whatever it is they draw you know they're they're down to like you know 10 percent body fat and they're just yoked and they look really good and suddenly sally from high school doesn't think jimmy is a fat kid anymore and she wants to have something to do with them i have and, a video coming out on this yeah. week on this exact topic yeah and so and so the guy thinks and maybe they didn't break up maybe they never even got together before but it was the girl he always wanted to get with mm -hmm. And I know, but I know this like firsthand because I used to be the same way. Like when I was in high school, and then I suddenly got into my rock star twenties. All the girls who kind of like blew me off back when I was like 16, 17, 18 years old. Now I'm 22, and I'm playing in the Hollywood metal scene, and I have the look that they're looking for, and I'm not interested in them anymore. Like I, I, I when I hear that, I, I've heard friends of mine do the same thing. That will go back, sort of go back in time to find the girl that the one that got away, kind of thing, yeah. and. What that says to me and what Tony Robbins thing says to me and what this says to me when guys say, how do I get my girlfriend back, period? I think the overarching narrative of this is scarcity. Guys Always. do not have abundance. Of and you know what? I Because they're thinking in terms of, well, she was the best I could do. She was the best girl that I ever had. She she did things to me that was fantastic. And maybe it was maybe it was fun for a while or maybe it was just basically mediocre to a guy like you or me or whoever else. But mm. they think it was the best thing in the world because they're part of that 80 percenter guys who are very, um, let's say, necessitous is the word I use. Mm. They always they, they think that that that's the best they can do. They've topped out and they're never going to do any better. If they're, that's their soulmate. That's why the blue pill encourages the idea of soulmates and one itis. It's why it because it makes you useful. It puts you into sort of this box where it's yeah, like you're a useful gonna, idiot. they want you back on a plantation. Yeah, exactly. They want you on the plantation because you're easily controllable at those times. And they want you dumb and ignorant of the game so that when you are useful at your most useful to that woman who is now checking out of the game that you're there and you're waiting and you're an equal partner and, and you're ready to go on into, you know, marriage and kids with a person who in all likelihood has already been with other guys and are, and you happen to be the guy that is the guy that she could lock down. Yeah. I know that like, you know, Roll has been married for a good chunk of his life, so he hasn't seen this, but like every single relationship from my twenties onwards has always been an upgrade. Um, there was a stand-up comic that made a joke about this once where, you know, like women will never go down financially with men, mm -hmm. men, men, generally speaking, especially once they get red pilled, will tolerate less and less crap. And often, you know, women are a female primary social order where will point and sputter at these guys and say, oh, you're immature, you're a commitment phobe, you know, fill in the narrative or the point and sputter reason why you're not, you know, settling down for this, you know, single mom with three kids in tow from two different fathers and an extra 50 pounds before you knew her in her 20s when she dumped you because you've gotten better and you tolerate less BS. And it's not misogyny. It's not women hate. It's just, you know, there's a lot of people out there that can that get that confusion. It's just no, as you get better and you and your SMV goes up and you make more money, you learn some game, you know, you put a dent in the universe. Your value is greater than what hers is because her her peaks in her 20s, you know, it's 22, 23, 24. After that, she's generally speaking on the decline. You know, sometimes you can push it off a little bit with some good health habits, but she's on the decline. I mean, it's it's just the reality of life. Right. I, if you, when you were reading um, the Iron Rule number seven, uh, yep. which is, you know, never, never root through garbage. The other part of that, I think, is almost more important. And they and that is that it is time better spent 
developing new women and new pros prospective women than it is trying to restart or to like repair an old relationship. Mm -hmm. Because when you get into that, when you're like, when you get in this mode of thinking, like the, uh, couples, like when they go to like marriage counseling or something, they're already in this mode. And the mode is you're negotiating genuine desire. When you first met that girl that you were with, and then you broke up with her for whatever, like she broke up with you or whatever, for whatever reason, prior to that breakup, when you guys were getting together, it was hopefully <laughs> it was based on genuine desire. She actually wanted to get with you and you guys were having hot monkey sex for the first three months in the honeymoon period kind of thing. And then you were foolish enough to move in with her or whatever, you know, and you ended up having this sort of long-term relationship. And so at some point, something shifted from genuine desire to sort of negotiating desire. And when you break up with that person, and then you and you come back to it, even if it works out for you, you're negotiating the terms for you coming back together. So yeah, you might have that hot you know, makeup sex for a little while and you might go through a, another sort of honeymoon period. But after a while, you're always going to have that one time where you guys broke up or that one time we had a break and she went and banged the guy in the foam cannon party in Cancun. And that's always going to be part of your relationship with that person. So what I always said is like the second part of that is this, is that it's always time better spent to get with somebody who doesn't know you, who you have a fresh start with, who you can learn from your mistakes. If you have made any or whatever, like maybe it's just you being more cautious or wary so that you have more experience and you move on from there. This is also why I say that spinning plates is, should be part of your, your game, your plan uh, from the time you're like 18 all the way until you're about 30, 31, 32, maybe even beyond that. Because what that does is it does two things. It prevents you from getting slipping into the idea that, oh, there's this one special girl for me and, and, and she's the only one for me. Like you, you start you know, fixating or catch feelings or get one-itis uh, when you are... Um, when you're spinning plates, when you're dating non-exclusively, and I mean that in the terms of not in poly, you're not like have one side, one main girl and you got like a few side girls. I mean, every one of your girls is side girls. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're doing, you're, you're, you're forestalling, I guess, the, or, or preventing one-itis, preventing the soulmate myth. You are in a uh, condition of abundance, at least mentally, even if you've only got like two girls or three girls, at least you're in a position of abundance where you can say, I can generate more options that options is what is where confidence comes from. So you're also developing confidence. The sec, uh, and then fourthly, um, you are also developing experience. So you understand women's nature better because you're dealing with different women and you're seeing what it is that you need and what, you know, from a long-term partner, assuming that's what you want to do in the future. So you've got abundance, you've got experience, you've got uh, ins somewhat insurance against uh, the, you know, the soulmate thing. Uh, you're getting, you got experience, everything else. And that's one of the reasons why I keep saying, you know, uh, spinning plates is a good thing for guys, particularly when you're young. It's not just about getting, you know, hitting every girl you can, you know, for the sake of the sex. It's because there's other things that go along with it. It's also a, a, a great strategy for men uh, post breakup, even if you're 40, you know, post post divorce, um, you know, ask me how I know about that. Let me hit these uh, super chats. Um, and then I have some questions here that I wanted to post to you as well that I put in the show notes. So Sebastian says, uh, great info. Thanks for uh, doing the suggestion. Thanks, man. Uh, actually, I think it was Sebastian that made the recommendation. It was him. Yeah, thank you. Um, and Christian said, Eddie Griffin states, you don't F down, you F up. What are good techniques for men to fight the urge to go back to a failed relationship? So I've got that in my um, talking points is um, how to get her out of your house and life for good. I mean, some guys are living with them. Some, you know, sometimes they're not. They'll like women will go to heroic lengths to try to come back into your life. If you've left them, if you're tired of putting up their crap and you say, we're done, move on. What's your take on how to get her out of your house and your life for good? Okay. Well, when I have like back in the day when I was answering all these questions, I think one of the reasons why this question is so popular, like how do I get my girlfriend back? One of the reasons it's so popular is because when a man and a woman split up, just like you were saying, it's the war brides dynamic for men, breaking up with a woman is different than it is for, for a man. So, so if, uh, so for, for instance, uh, men and women's, uh, mating strategy, a reproductive strategy is different and is often adversarial. It's not that you can't come together and be compliments and have babies and 
form families. Okay, I, I get that. But well, before you get to that point, you have adversarial mating strategies. So when we're talking about men's innate dating stra- or m- innate mating strategy, it's usually unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. Spread the seed. That I mean, biologically, that's where we are. Um, it's I believe it's our selection, which is the the mat, like spread the seed kind of thing, like breed like rabbits, like have sex with as many women as you possibly can have as many babies as you possibly can continue your genetic legacy for women. It's the opposite. I think it's K selection where they're looking for uh, the, the, the quality. They're looking for the guy who's going to stick around because that could be a de- if a guy doesn't stick around and protect her and her offspring. Women are the most vulnerable sex and therefore. Uh, if he's not there to protect her and provide for her, that could be a death sentence in our ancestral past. So that's the evolutionary lesson right there. But as a result, today in 2020, one of the reasons why guys get so hung up on their ex-girlfriends, particularly beta guys, particularly guys who are low SMV, who don't have the same kind of opportunity or availability uh, of lots and lots of girls to spread the seed, they have to... Um, they have to adjust their mating strategy. So it's they're putting all of their reproductive efforts into one girl. And the one thing that they need from that one girl, if they're going to put off all these other girls, if they if assuming they even had the opportunity to, but they're gonna put they're gonna forsake all others to put all of their reproductive effort into one girl. Well, what happens is by doing so, they become sort of addicted to that girl. And those guys who do, who know that on some level of consciousness that they don't have the op- the same kind of reproductive opportunities that they would like to have, when they put all of their efforts into that, they develop what's called relational equity. And that's a, a, a another essay that I've done. And so they think that all the things that they're doing is what is convincing that girl that she's in a high quality relationship, that she that's she's the guy, he's the guy for her. So if I go All into that my- comes from the Tony Robbins garbage too, is you know, fill mm-hmm. her cup, give her what she needs, you know. Yeah. And then these guys start to think about, oh, well, I've put relationship equity into this. Yes. And and a relationship equity is always a failing strategy, particularly in 2020, when a woman doesn't care about that, doesn't need that as much, and does not and has been taught not to appreciate that as much and certainly not in the terms of well i he's a great guy why am i why do i not feel like i want to have sex with him why do i you know he he's he's fantastic he's a great father he he does the homework with the kids he he gets them to school on time he does all this great stuff but i don't have any lust for him i don't have any arousal for him but i really do my personal trainer over here and i'd really like to get with this guy the, and women will be very confused about that. They're, like a lot of people like sort of mistake that that's malice. Like, oh, I'm going to have I'm going to have him over here and I'm going to go bang this guy who's my my personal trainer over here. It's not. Usually women are like, I don't know. I don't know why I feel this way. You well, they don't find myself real low. Yeah, I, I yeah, I need have a, I, I need to heal myself. It's the same thing that I was talking about in the Will Smith video that I did, the very popular Will Smith video. That's what she did. She yeah. had to heal herself because she didn't want to be with. I like got an entanglement with uh, August or whatever. Entanglement, yes, yeah. yeah. So Will Smith is a great guy. I I like Will Smith. I do. I really feel bad for the dude. He's like I've never seen him more beta. But yeah. she's banging this guy who's like 23 years old and hot and fun and, and on top of his game. And yeah, of course, that's what she wants to get with. She can't even tell you. She can't even she can't be honest with herself because she doesn't realize it herself that that's really what she's after. That's really what she wanted to get with. And now she feels bad for it because everybody on planet Earth thinks Will Smith is a great guy. And so if they think he's getting screwed by her. That looks bad on her, and so now she's got to make up all kinds of you know the hamster wheel starts spinning. Mm-hmm. But the the, the thing, the, how we come back to this is that um, the mating strategy for guys, primarily for beta guys, is to put all of their eggs in one basket. It's called a uh, plural. Uh, was it strategic pluralism? Mm-hmm. If you can't have unlimited access to unlimited sexuality, then it behooves you as a lower value, low SMV guy to. Ha- to develop a scarcity mentality, to believe in the soulmate myth, to uh, it, it's in your best interest to, to do that because if she believes it and you believe it, then you have a more, like this is theoretically, you have a more solid relationship. So what happens is when those guys get into relationships based on that idea, when that splits up, they've lost everything. That's how they get zeroed out. So I'll get guys uh, in my counseling or whatever. They'll hit me up an email. They go, Rolo, I can't stand the idea of her banging another guy. 
I can't get it out of my head. It, we broke up a year ago and, and I know she's with this guy because I follow her Instagram and I stalk her on social media, yeah. which is something we've never been able to do before. But I, I, I can't stand it. I can't even think about it anymore. And I feel like I'm going to like I'm going to explode. I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill whoever. I'm just going to go on this murderous rampage because I can't get the thought out of my head. And, the, so, and I thought, well, okay, is this guy really whacked? No, he's not because a lot of guys report the same feelings because they are literally detoxing from that woman because that there. woman represented yeah. their only shot, their only and best shot at reproduction. And now she's betraying that. Oh, well, I thought she was going to be great. I thought she was going to have my babies. He was invested in the idea that his paternity with her was assured. And, and bro, then, you look back on those on those crazy thoughts in your head, and you think, "Wow, that yeah, was now that you've detoxed." That was, that's them. that's yes. what I was thinking. That's yes. that's insane. And that's why you need guys who are like third party, who are not addicted to the chick that you are. And like, I you know, I know you've done this before. Like, you see a guy who's in that kind of pit of misery, and he's just like, "I can't stand it." And you look at the girl, and she's like this fat little kind of frumpy four, yeah. maybe four and a half, and you go, "What are you? Th how is this even like?" what you would want to get with. I've taught guys out of that before. Like I said, dude, you can go to a strip. Dude, I can get you laid right now with a better looking chick than that. I don't care. I want her. I want her yeah. That's yeah. Because wh Okay. Why, where does that come from? Yeah. It comes from the idea that that's his only shot at reproduction. And she was his only shot at a woman who would have his kids and they wouldn't be someone else's kids because that's the biological imperative. Let me, um, let me grab these uh, chats. I mean, we're on a good roll here. There's there's one that's just a quick uh, social joke from Judd. He says, Rolo, how many more times are you going to stand up Cleary? He never shuts up about it to the point. I'm starting to think you are his unicorn. <laughs> did you did you alpha wid widow Cleary? I, I could. I, he, he came to Reno one time, and he, he was up in Tahoe, and for whatever reason, I couldn't get up there. And I think what I'm going to have to do now is take my GoPro and like track him down in Minnesota or like next time he's in Vegas, I'll just fly down there unannounced and go like up to his door and I'll, I'll do a full on video. of. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then there's another one here from Giovanni. It's more of a question, uh, which comes up all the time. So this isn't new, but I mean, we might as well hit on it because it's, because mm -hmm. it's never going to stop coming. Uh, recently bought my brother, the rational male. For those of you that don't know, Rolo Tomasi is the author of the rational male and he rebuked it. Google Rolo Tomasi with his girlfriend, shake my head. And that was enough to refuse the book and its content. What do you guys say about that? What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the content or I don't know what you, I don't know what he looked at to rebuke. I rebuke you. What, what is he? Is he a pastor? Is he a youth pastor? I think, I think typically what happens is, you know, the girlfriend needs to stamp her approval on the book, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, you know, she realizes that he could potentially learn some things which might be harmful or, right. or might take away some control that she's benefiting right now from this beta. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you're not allowed to read to this uh, Gary, Bob, George. I had, a, um, I had a guy, um, I, I was doing, it was on my, one of my call in shows and, or not call. It was one of my, uh, my open Q and A's and a guy hit me up and said that he was, was with, maybe it was with you. I, I forget, but there, a guy came in and he said that his, um, his best friend's wife didn't want, him to bring his hot little girlfriends to like social events that mm -hmm. he, he and his friend's wife were having, you know, and, and like he was, I think he said he was like 43 and his girlfriend's right, around 22 or 25 or something like that. And of course, all of the older women who are all married and, and sort of in that mindset, they didn't want him to bring his little, you know, age inappropriate hotties to this. And Ricky. Yeah, and yeah, is, yeah, is uh, what is his chippy? They don't yeah, want to chippy. don't bring your chippies here, and um, and he was asking me about that. He's like, how do I how do I get out of that? I said, well, first of all, you don't hang out with his wife, but yeah. then that led me to very uh, a similar uh, answer to this one is is a lot of women will will be very protective of their guys that they that they remain ignorant that they don't read those things. That's, that's don't. It's like uh, Ed Lattimore said this. Ed Lattimore said, it's like teaching slaves to read. <laughs> and you don't want your slaves to read. And that's exactly what what uh, what, what the rational male was. Is a, it's a threat to women's... Oh, like When you think about... Well, it's a threat to her sexual strategy, right? Like she doesn't want you to have options. I'm glad you mentioned that because it's not just... A, okay, a sexual strategy is usually what we're talking about, right? But it's also her life strategy. 
Yeah. It's also, I need to keep this guy dumb until he gets past his, like, until he realizes the jig is up. <laughs> I don't want him to do that until I have him 100% on board. And so they get ga- women who are very good at gaslighting, particularly beta male guys, yeah. uh, particularly guys who are, and, and that's the thing is when that woman is in the process of kind of like a slow burn gaslighting of that guy, when Rolo Tomasi comes along or when the rational male comes along or the red pill comes along and they start saying, Hey, have you thought about this? Or, you know, here's the truth about marriage. Here's the truth about women's nature, hypergamy, this soulmate, that blah, blah, blah. Dude, I am, I am laughing from ear that. to ear. Remind me when we get off the air to tell you a story and I'll, I'll tell you why off the air, but yeah, totally. I, I, I co-signed that hundred well, percent. Was that, that was the joke. That was a joke. I think I put it in uh it was either in the third book or the second book where it's yeah. like uh, the guy whose girlfriend picked up my book, found him reading it. And, and then she took it and read it for about like, you know, a week comes back and throws it in his lab. And she says, everything in that book is true. And you shouldn't know any of it. Yeah. Now, it's funny, <laughs> but it's not funny because the reason, the reason she's saying it, uh, Dan says, great to see you guys together. My red, my favorite red pill teachers, big up guys. Love you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, this guy wants to know when you're open up to counseling, are you doing any more consults? Uh, I am taking names right now. So if you need, uh, counseling, I, I mean, unless you're like really at your wits end, I will probably, uh, I'll, I'll take, I will definitely keep you, uh, on the, on the roster, but my focus right now is on book four and I should be done with it end of this week, possibly the end of next week. We'll see how it goes. Let's just, let's just put this out there to see what the appetite looks like, because we kind of talked about this the other day, uh, before the rule zero, but we were talking about doing like an after show to counsel guys, um, on zoom. It'll, you yeah. know, be a paid access sort of thing, but be if you guys think that that's, <laughs> yeah, like if you guys think that that's something that you'd want to participate in, then just leave a comment below and, or just in the chat if you're live right now. But, um, so we didn't really clarify how to get her out of your life in your house for good. So what, so what would your strategy be? You're well, done. She keeps coming back, bothering you. How do you get rid of this chick? Well, is she coming back and bothering you? Usually if a girl is coming back to you, something happened. Okay. Uh, I think it kind of depends on who's the one who broke up with who. Yeah. The leave or maybe. Okay. And 80% of the time being 80% guys beta, it's usually the woman that breaks up with the guy. It's not the other way around. And I, uh, the reason I say that, and I, people say, well, where's your stats? Where's your proof? Well, here's my proof. My proof is this, is that first of all, women are, we're in a gynocentric social order and women are the primary sexual selectors. When women are between the age, you know, when they're at their peak years, when they're in their, when they're in their twenties, uh, 22, 23, right, right there. Most women aren't really interested in long-term relationships as it is. But when you get into that, when you are in, and it's at an early phase, it's usually because that woman thought you were somebody that you weren't. And then it took her X amount of years or however long your LTR was for her to finally say, you know what, I'm in college, I want to have my fun, uh, we're going to break up. Usually that's that's a, a, a prime demographic. I even put that in, in book two in preventive medicine. That's what I call the break phase. It's usually the guy who gets with his girlfriend in high school and thinks they're going to be, they're, you know, going to live happily ever after and be high school sweethearts and get married. And she goes off to college and then he gets the phone call. Uh, you know, things aren't working out. I'm here. You're there. Um, you know, I was, I was drunk. He was cute. And one thing led to another. Um, so th- it, it kind of depends on the circumstances. I would say most of the time, if a woman is trying to get back with you, it's usually because you're the alpha she's widowed from. And if she broke up with you, maybe she made a bad, she was trying to figure out what her options were. Yeah. So when, when, when women break up with guys, it's usually because that somewhere along the line, that hypergamous filter was tripped is he the best I can do? If the answer is no, enough times that's when, and another opportunity comes up, then that's usually when I need to take a break. I'm, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what the, what the circumstances are. Usually, like I said, if a woman's coming back to you, it's probably because you broke up with her. If most guys are the ones asking the question, how do I get my girlfriend back? Women don't say, how do I get my boyfriend back? I really screwed up. You will never. I mean, women if you don't get one itis. Very rare. Yeah. Women don't have, don't have one itis. That's, that's called being an alpha widow. That's something totally yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so how do you get her out of your life? How do you get her out of your head? The first thing is this, is you have to understand it, it's knowing is half the battle, right? 
um, you have to understand that you are addicted to that girl. There is a biochemical element to your breaking up with her. So when guys come up to me and they say, I can't get her on my own. I can't get these feelings. I, you know, it's, and it's really tough when that guy is like 18 mm. and he's got the hormonal thing going, you know, or maybe he's in his you know, 16 or something. So not only is that uh, there, I've, I've seen, t I really need to go dig up the links for this, but there's a, a few Ted talks about the biochemistry of love and how it is literally as addicting in some ways as like heroin or like, like hard drugs. And the reason for that is, is because it's meant to pair bond you with that woman so you will have babies really that's what evolutionary psychology that's what evolution is about have mm -hmm. babies i don't care how you have them just have the babies that's all it, that's all it's really about and stick together ensure survival and how do we do that well we have a biochemical element that's part of that so you need to detox when guys tell me i can't i can't get her out of my head i have dreams about her mm -hmm. i have dreams about my ex and and it's it's disturbing and i can't stop having dreams about her yeah because what's happening is you're like a junkie. <laughs> you're trying to find some way to get those good feelings back. That's why you'll come up with rationales. That's why you'll, that's why you won't care. That's why you'll forgive her for banging the guy in the foam cannon party on spring break, because you don't care what the conditions were. So you don't about care about humiliating yourself. You don't care about anything that's esoteric. You just want that good dopamine hit that those endorphin hits again that you felt when you first started having sex with her and you want to reestablish that those good feelings you will do what's called going it's in behavioral psychology terms it's called an extinction burst and so what you will do is you will try novel behaviors you'll do anything you'll do shit that you would not believe you, you would not think like if i told you you're going to do this you would not believe that you would do it for a girl that's you will get to that point because you're trying to reestablish that. That's why guys end up doing like uh, uh, they end up doing like pres uh, prescription drugs um, or they will become alcoholics. So the first place most guys go when they have a breakup, they go right straight to the bottle because mm -hmm. that's a way of reinitiating those good feelings. So you have to detox. You have to understand that that's what your body's going through. And I think really, if I had, if I had a, st if I was going to develop like some kind of technique to help guys get over women, that would be where I would start first. Is you have to get in the gym. Don't drink. Don't take drugs. Accept what it is. And you know what? You want to get those good feelings again. Get out and get back on the horse. Get back under a girl. Like I say, you know how to get. Oh, how do I get over a girl? You get under the next one. Get into a new one. Yeah. Get into a new one, and that's why I keep saying. You got to spin plates. You can't you don't go back and dig out, uh, you know, whatever you thought was worthwhile in the trash. Once it's on the curb, it's there. It's done. Leave it alone. Move on. It's better time, better spent working on another girl. So you get her out. You delete her from your phone. You delete her from your life. You ghost her. You do whatever it is that you have to do. But primarily, you have to understand that there is that connection that is a physical, literally, it's a biochemical connection. And if you don't realize that, you will do things without even realizing that you're like, I'm, I'm drinking, I'm, I'm, I'm drugging, I'm doing whatever I can do because I'm trying to get those feelings back. I'm, I'm a lot colder than what. Rolo's described and it's like I go on scorched earth man it's like block everything um you know change your phone number and if you need a restraining order if she's bothering you then get that like like just get the point across that you're done and it ain't happening and just make it clear as hell um we've got a few more super chats and then we'll start to wrap up because I got to move on to another broadcast I got to do privately for my uh, men's group uh Chris Von Eric says great shirt rich brought one myself also the zero f given uh check out Chris on YouTube he's got a channel he's a good dude uh, let me just show you real quick where you get these because I always get people send me a, a message and it's like, hey, where do I get your shirts, blah, blah, blah. So if you go to the channel on uh, the store tab and you can get this on mobile. So all the merch there, it's all it's all made by Teespring, um, you know, so they take a cut of it, but I get a little bit of it too. So it helps, you know, support the creation. So any of these t-shirts, you know, these mugs that you guys see me, you know, drinking from often, you know, with my teas, they're all there in the store. Grab one, you know, they're awesome uh, pieces of uh, gear. Uh, there's another one here from Sam Whiskey. Two brothers started a shoe company and they were doing financially well until one day one of them the brothers married a karen as a result the company split into entities adidas and puma <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh there's one more here i see it uh less is how do i get her back but how do i reduce the shame through good living always is the best revenge i promise you guys um 
for the most part, you're going to like, as you get better in life, like from my twenties, thirties to forties to even today, I've had just about every ex-girlfriend hit me up at some point. Um, you know, especially as a function through social media and Facebook and YouTube and, and, and like all these platforms and they see that you're doing better, or they look you up or somebody says that they saw some of your content and like, Hey, how are you? And these women have no shame. They have no shame whatsoever, man. They could be married with kids in tow to a successful guy that, that makes bank and they'll, and they'll just start drooling all over you, like in your DMS. And that's just the reality of it. Like it's going to happen. So you just move on. You let these, let these things go. Uh, Judd says, uh, to cope, I find it freeing knowing that everyone, even me is replaceable, makes it easier to move on and enjoy my remaining time on this earth. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, like you need to understand that you're replaceable and women are replaceable. There are no, like, there is no one, there is no unicorn. It is what it is. All right. You we know, got, it's, I tell you, that is one of the, oh God. Okay. We got, we got John He's in the so chat handsome. too. He's so handsome. He's so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say is that uh, that's one of the reasons why I put um, there is no one uh, the fallacy of the one is the very first chapter of of the rational male because I figured if if there's one chapter that if people like read one chapter and they threw it away that's the one I wanted them to to stick because that's usually the hardest one because so many guys think in those terms they think that it's Disney yes whatever but it's not only is it dangerous to think that there's there's you know only one perfect perfect soulmate out there for you it puts you into that 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 you know that mindset of necessitousness there's um I, there's one thing i wanted to to, to I, I was glad you're doing this topic because there's one thing i didn't get to over the last couple of shows that i was hoping to get to but fire away i got like um, 10 minutes left so this is, so this is um this is a this was something that i was thinking about when i was doing the marriage show yesterday and really it was sort of a leftover from the will smith show when uh, Jada Pinkett ended up banging, what's his name, the, the rapper August. guy. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll see you. best friend. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, so when I thought about that, I, I was thinking about an old tweet and then actually a, a, a germ of an idea I was going to do for a post. I still might do the post, but um, when a woman has sex with another guy, when, when she said, when she just has decided she's going to cheat on the guy that she's in an LTR with, whether it's her husband or whatever, when she has finally says, you know what, I'm going to go and make myself available to this guy. And I'm going to go on. I'm, I've just decided that I'm going to do it. Once she's done that and she's had sex with that one guy and she starts to develop, like, I want to see this guy again and I want to have sex with him again. And he's the alpha and he becomes a sort of sub, maybe she's not consciously cognitively making that connection, but her subconscious is he's saying this guy that I'm cheating with, uh, the, the guy who I'm having an affair with, he's the alpha and my husband, my boyfriend, whatever is the beta. So what happens is while she's trying to sort of keep it under wraps and like not, you know, trying to keep it on the sly and not let him know. And she still has this kind of alpha commitment to the guy who she's cheating with, but she has to go home and she still has to put up the idea that she's still going to have sex with him or if she's not, she's having less sex or she's having less intense sex with that guy. She's not giving the husband, she's not giving the guy that she's supposed to be with, like she's supposed to be committed to. She's not giving her, giving him her all, right? She's not having her sexual best with that one guy because what happens is when a woman's psyche imprints on that, the most dominant alpha, the most dominant male that's in her life, it feels like she's cheating on the alpha with the guy she's already committed with, with the guy who's like like Will Smith. So if you and just to just to clarify and make a better illustration of this, I'm not saying this is exactly how it happened, but let's just say for sake of argument, you've got Will Smith, who is this you know good beta husband, who's you know maybe he was alpha at one time, but he's just sort of like you know goes along to get along. Yeah, you do it, you do you. We're life partners now, whatever. And people want to say, well, he's had sex. He he was cheating too. I don't know that. We don't know that. But let's just say for sake of argument, he's the beta and uh, Alcina is the is the alpha. When she has to go back home and pretend like she's still into it with him, she's doing that in protest, a psychological protest, because the guy that she really wants to get with, the guy who really rocks her world, the guy who is the most dominant alpha male in her life is the guy that now she feels like she's cheating on with her husband of 20 years or something like that. And what I don't think, what I think happens is I think that a lot of guys who are in that situation when they're being cheated on, 
and maybe that ends up in a, in a, in a breakup or whatever. You want to know why guys end up breaking up, like their, their girlfriends or wives break up with them. It's usually because they've already imprinted on a guy who that they feel like they're having sex with their husband that it feels like cheating on the guy that they should be with. The one He's my one. He's my soulmate. He's the one I should be with, not this guy that I have to have sex with because if I don't, then I can't keep up appearances. And so that creates a conflict within that woman as to like, should I be with this guy? Should I not be with this guy? Until it comes to a head and then she either um, admits to it or the guy gets suspicious. The guy who's the husband, the guy who's the boyfriend gets suspicious because she's acting weird. She's not having sex with him the way she was before he finds out. And that's when it comes to a head. So when guys come to me and they say, Rollo, I think she's cheating or, or, or they feel like these really intense feelings of mate guarding. It's usually because that woman has already imprinted on the most dominant alpha in her. Like she'll have his interests or, well, there's this guy that I got to go work with and blah, blah, blah. And like the guy she tells you not to worry about. And then there's you, they, that, that joke, that, that meme, that has a, a real basis in reality. Because what happens is she feels like she is cheating on that guy that she should be with. That's the guy who is the best she can do. Yeah, Not you're, 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 you're pretty much spot on with that. I did a video once. Um, I just dug it up and I'll post it in the chat. You guys can read this yourself because it's a down, because it's a downloadable PDF, but I did a video once breaking this down on my channel. Mm -hmm. You can probably find it if you search for mate switching study plus entrepreneurs and cars. So you don't have to read it, but it's done by David Buss. And what you're saying there is, is, is pretty much spot on. Um, it's, that's just the way that it goes down. So I'm not going to spend like an hour explaining it again. Go and go and look up that video. Um, I got to start to wrap this up and get ready for my next show. So real quick, I want to, I'm just going to go full screen here and quickly shout out over here to the Grondike Soap Company. So Tactical Soap's a channel sponsor. Uh, the show is brought to you by these uh, great people. So they've been sponsoring the channel for a while. It's Pheromone Infused Handmade Soap. Supports the creation of content on the channel. If you go to coopersoap.com or when I get off the broadcast, I'll put the links pinned in the top comment. You can grab some of this stuff. It's high quality. It, it, it's just amazing stuff. So grab some if you enjoy the show. And real quick here, um, I also have a new channel which I set up uh, called Rich Cooper Clips. So again, if you go to YouTube and just on the suggested channels link or you can just search for Rich Cooper Clips. It's a brand new channel. So you're getting highlights of my longer form content. So when you see stuff on Before the Train Wreck or Playing to Win, uh, they're, they're shorter sound bites. So you'll see it's like eight minutes, five minutes. Um, and I've got a whole bunch more videos that I got to publish uh, on this channel. Um, just think of like Joe Rogan clips, but my own version of it. So if you'd want to go su subscribe there, let me copy and paste that in for you guys. I would greatly appreciate it. And I hope you guys love that content. Um, remove. And what do you got going on this week, Rolly? You want to let people know where they can find uh, you? Well, let's see. I got my Wednesday show coming up. That is at 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, pretty much if you know who I am, you probably already subscribe to it. But if you don't, go check me out. Um, I do a show every Sunday and every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. This this Wednesday, I think I'm probably going to finally dig into like open Q&A. And I have like a huge bag of email that I need to answer. Similar to like what you were talking about before, where we kind of want to do some counseling for guys where have access to us. Uh, I think that's a, a, a really great idea, um, primarily because a lot I was fishing through my email. So I know this. Um, a lot of guys who want counseling from me all have a lot of the uh, commonalities, a lot of like common situations. So if one guy calls in and he want, and we're we're talking to him, the likelihood of that it's going to apply to a lot, like you know, a dozen other guys is pretty high. So <laughs> So that's that's always good. Uh, then of course we have uh, Rule Zero. I am hosting on Saturday uh, on my channel, and then again on Sunday. Uh, book is coming along nicely. Um, I'm at third rounds, third round of edits right now. Uh, I am already doing the layout for the print, and I have the cover already set. But I'm not going to. I am not going to show it to you. <laughs> Okay. Um, thanks for hopping on and contributing, brother. I really appreciate it. Um, you know where to find Rolo. And again, you know, subscribe to my new channel. We'll see you guys in the next broadcast. Peace out.